when did your mom start raising your child? Um, since he was one. One years old? Mm -hmm. Okay, then. And why, your mom now has guardianship of your son, Trayvon? Correct. Okay, and why? I had a warrant. I, I left Nebraska where she was at, and I left him there because she was threatening to, to call the police. And I'm like, if you did, if you, you know I got a warrant, why would you do that? So I was like, you know what, just leave him and go turn yourself in and then come back get him. But got when it. I turned myself in and was like, okay, mom, I'm ready to get him, she hit me with, oh, you got to go to court. Got it. Okay. So the reason you turned yourself in was more out of a threat from your mom mm -hmm. calling the police. Okay. Um, what was it like growing up with your mom? She wasn't there. Oh, uh, okay. She wasn't there. Who raised you then? My father. Your father raised you. Okay. And where was your mom? Wherever she was at. I don't know. Okay. Got it. Didn't raise you. Okay. I understand. And when did your mom come back in your life? So she reached out, I could probably say when I was 13, I turned it down. I remember a letter coming to the house. My dad was like, you got a letter for your mom. I didn't want it. 16, she reached out again, didn't care. I had my baby. At 19, I'm like, okay, I got a son. Never mind what me and my mom got going on. I got a child. Let them get a barn. Okay, got it. <laughs> so how soon after you had Trayvon did you move in with your mom again? I'd say no later than a month after we left there. So a month after you had your child yeah. is when you moved in with your mom. When I first had him, I made it very clear that I did not want kids. I, when I had him, I even was like, okay, I'm going to get, get him for adoption because I wasn't ready. I was only 18. I was not ready to be a parent. But I made this very clear to my dad and my mother that I'm not ready to be a parent. But once I had him, like, no, nah, I can't do that. I can't do what my mama did. I have to step up and do what I have to do. So, you told my producer that you feel like your mom planned to take your son all along. I do. I really. Why do you feel that way? I don't know. I just feel like she, the way she went about things, like if you wanted calling the police or threatening to call like, the police on you. She used to use calling CPS. She called. She threatened me with the police, knowing I had a warrant. Like, it, I just feel like she did it on purpose. Mm -hmm. So it. I feel like this is her way of being like, okay, now nah, I can show you I could be a parent. Mm, got it. I want to hear your mother's side of the story, and she has some things that she said earlier. So everyone, let's take a look at this. I am my grandson's guardian. I make sure my grandson gets whatever he needs. I'm the one who makes sure Trayvon is up, has breakfast, gets dressed, and ready for school. I'm the one who puts my grandson to bed at night. I'm providing a roof over his head and a stable environment for that little boy. It is frustrating to be a full-time parent again, and that's not what I want it for my life. I feel like Trinity takes me for granted because she knows I'm always going to be there for my grandson and she gets to go and come as she wants to freely because she knows that I have it. I don't think my daughter gives me nearly enough credit for the sacrifice or the undertaking of caring for my grandson while she's trying to figure out what she's going to do with her life. I do everything for her son. Everything. Yeah, I gave her, like, I left her with her dad because I was on drugs. I was 20 years old on my third child. When her dad called me while she was in jail and was like, yeah, Trinity's pregnant, Chris was very adamant that Trinity could not come back to his house with the child. Mm -hmm. And I told Chris, you can't be like that. We're going to figure this out because, you know, she was talking about an abortion. And I was like, I'm not going to let you have an abortion, what have you, or whatever. So Trinity was like, I want to come and let's do this. And Is that why you have guardianship of Trayvon? I have guardianship over Trayvon because she was abusing my grandson. She called him bitches. She threw shit at him. She left him in a dirty ass room. So if we're going to unpack, let's, let's unpack. Excuse me, I need a minute. Oh, my gosh. What's going through your mind right now? For her to actually sit here, like, I just woke up one day and I was like, here, I want my daughter's son. She got up and left this boy in the middle of the day. You abandoned your son. I did not take your son. You're not going to sit here lying on me, Trinity. I you left him you and you I... keep on leaving him. What is wrong with you? I need a minute. I'm not sitting to do this with you. You left him. Goodness gracious. What's going on in your mind? Talk to me. One, I did not up and leave him. <laughs> he went to school that day, so I did not just up and leave him. 
I told her and my dad and her husband and her mom ahead of time that I was leaving. I still have their screenshots and the message to prove I told her I was leaving. Mm -hmm. So that did not just happen. Yes, the part of me not taking care of him is true, but it wasn't like I didn't want to take care of him. I didn't have the the part-time to be like, damn, I just had a baby. Sabrina, I gotta ask you, did you two have a relationship before Trayvon? We had a relationship, but it was more so like a usury, mom, I need this, mom, I need that, because she was pregnant, so she always got her hand out for something. And at first I used to be like, well, maybe I owe it to her a little bit because I know I wasn't there. But at some point in time, the b gotta stop. <laughs> so, like, you're not just gonna keep on using me because you think I owe you. I've apologized. I can't help it that you didn't have the best life with your dad. I'm not making any excuses for what I did as an parent, but at least I left you with your dad. It's not like I left you on the corner. It's not like I let you go live in foster care and limbo. You know, I didn't do those things. I left you with who I thought could take care of you best because I wasn't in a position to take care of you. It hurt my heart for her to sit here and make it seem like, like it's a conspiracy to keep my grandson. Because when your son came home from the hospital, Miss, I'm ready to be a mom, your dad didn't even have running water in there for y'all. No, don't hold on nothing. Don't hold on nothing. Alone. Don't um, hold on alone. nothing. So the person saying hold on, Trinity, is your father, Christopher, right? Yes. Don't hold on thank nothing. Thank you for joining us. Um, please stand for me. Buckets of water, um, roach, roach, <laughs> and the right, apartment. Don't, don't play with me. Don't play so, with me. So, Christopher, I got to ask you, because I see you had a reaction to that. What was it like raising Trinity? Uh, it was good times, bad times. You know, don't she was a handful, but all that. Wow, I didn't want her. When my grandson was born, she already know. Me and her went through it. But once my grandson was born, I was there for him the whole nine. The only reason he really left, because she said she wanted to bond with her mother. That's the real reason why. Don't you and Trinity sit here and lie. Sabrina said that when your daughter was pregnant, you said you didn't want her to stay with you. Is that true? Yeah, because me and Trinity was going through it. Okay. Trini know that. Me and Trini was going through it. But you didn't know your father didn't want you to stay. You just thought you were going through it. It okay. doesn't benefit me to lie. How does the situation affect Trinity, in your opinion? She's hurting from it. Yeah. Yeah. Is the situation hurting you, too? Yeah. Because what? I was there through the whole birth, through all of it. What are you doing now, Chris? The last thing that I remember that you did for your grandson is when you were here in Nebraska and you bought him some <laughs> McDonald's. I've been stepping up this whole time, so having him alone, it, it was going to be nothing. Oh, she's not ready to raise her son, but then in her face, oh, Trinity, go get your son, go get her son. She go needs go. her son. She's but not you ready. you play both sides of the fence. There's she's no both She's ready. not ready. You but she him. still needs him. him. I, that, I, that, she I'm still not, needs I'm not him. Saying that, that, she's that's the case. not ready. I'm not ready, saying that. I never still said that needs was the him. case. I don't keep her from her son. I do not not allow her to talk to her son. I don't do none of that. I didn't wake up in the morning and say, oh, I want to be a parent again. That's not what I had on my mind. I'm like, damn, I'm about to get a divorce. I'm about to be single. Let me be enjoy being by myself. But no, I couldn't do that. I have to raise my grandson. Somebody got to be consistent and stable for him while everybody else gets to do whatever they want to do whenever they want to do it. So Trinity, how, you are not does, ready to get does... your son back. Okay. Oh. Sabrina, you said that Trinity is not ready to get back her son back. What does she need to do to be ready, in your opinion? She needs to be stable, not from pillow to post. Have a job. Not want to get him because she think it's going to let her, help her get some food stamps or it's going gonna, it's gonna, to, it's, she can get some assistance or whatever. He's not a check. He's a child. <laughs> okay. I don't give food stamps. I got a job. Congratulations. Congratulations. That's what you need to do. But I've been doing that. Sabrina. Nothing ever. Sorry, Karamo. I'm no, sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine. This is your life. You're allowed to feel how you feel. It's not even my life. It's my grandson's life. At the end of the day, that's all that matters. It's Trayvon. That's all that matters. That's not true. That's not true. Sabrina? Can I correct one thing that you just said? That's not true. There's another child that involved. 
I really do understand your frustration. Can I tell you this though? Your daughter hasn't picked her head up once since she's been in front of me. A lot of, of what she's feeling is a lot of pain from her being a child and her self-esteem is broken. And so the way that she, she acts out, of course it's frustrating for you now because it's like she has a kid. There's something you said that I wanna, I wanna show you how this is mimicked. You said when you, know, when you were not there for her, you said you had to go. And you said, it's not like I left you on the street. I left you where I thought you were best. You said that. I said that. And I believe it. Your daughter's going through the same things right now. I understand that. And right now, as she's trying to figure out her own emotions, she's trying to figure out what this is to be a woman, she's also trying to figure out how to work through her own abandonment issues, all these things that I can see. She's leaving her child. She's not abandoning it. She's leaving her child where she thinks the child is going to be at its best. I know that. I know Hold that. On. Hold on. <laughs> I know Hold that. The reason I'm pointing that parallel out for you is because I know you're frustrated. And I know you, one of the things you said is maybe I owe her, but I don't think I owe her. She can't keep using me. I don't think she's using you. I know it feels to you like she's using you. And I, I, I'm, 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 I'm clear. I, I, can, I can see where you're at in your life. And I understand how it could feel that way. But I want you to think about this. This young woman has never had a real relationship with you. So she doesn't know how to communicate what she's feeling. She doesn't know what, how to communicate how for you two to know each other. Your daughter is screaming out silently that she wants her mother to fight as hard for her as you're fighting for her child. I do. I do. I just told her not uh, about a month ago, I'm like, if you're gonna be here, be here. If you're not gonna be here, then just leave because her in and out don't only affect her son, it affects me. I want you, I want you to hear that. And I want you to imagine that those words are coming out of her mouth. Because I understand you're living your life, but I keep thinking you're not understanding the experience she had. Because I'm here and I understand your experience. You just said either come in or out this is the experience she had with you. I didn't go in and out of her life. I left and I did not come back. But here we are. You, you left, didn't come back, and now hold on. You're here now, mm -hmm. and every time she does something that doesn't meet your liking, it's, I'm tired of you. I did, I'm not saying you kicked her out physically. I'm telling you what could trigger someone who feels abandoned. She wants to be up underneath her mother. That's what well, she, she wants. Fighting me. I want my daughter up under me. She can't, she can't help it. She can't help it. Let me tell you what the reason she can't help it. Why she can't help it? Because she spent years not believing if you really wanted to, for her to be up underneath you because you weren't there. I want you to do me a favor and ask your daughter to lift her head. Put your head up. I tell you all the time, you are here, you are seen, you are heard, you are loved. You don't believe that, do you? I know. Come on, Trinity. Don't stand up, baby. Come on. Don't. And I was going to try. Don't do that. Don't do that, baby. It's sorry. I know. I'm sorry, too. We so much better than this. OK, let me do this. OK, I love you, Trinity. I love you, too. I love you. I love your life. If you need me to apologize in front of the whole world, I apologize for abandoning you. I apologize for not being the mother that you needed me to be. I apologize sincerely from the bottom of my heart. It's not, I don't want to apologize. You've been apologizing. I need you to understand. I need you to understand me the same way with my dad. I need y'all to understand me, not as a mother, but as your child. The little girl that you wasn't there for, she's been hurting. And she's still hurting. So, Trinity, what is it that Sabrina can do to help Trinity? I don't even know where to start. I honestly don't. And that's OK. Mom. Mom. And that's OK. Mom, good job. That's OK. Mom, really good job. I'm going to ask you one other thing on top of that. I know you got a mouth. <laughs> but I'm just going to ask if you could be more patient. Because when you say those things that are like, when you cuss and you're doing those things, you're really cussing at that little girl. Yeah. And that's what keeps the head down. Understood. 
All right, I really do wish y'all the best of luck. All right, you're gonna be all right. And thank you, Dad. You did a great job raising him.